as the travel nurse market hit rock bottom. Should you be looking for a staff job? Are you already in a staff job? Should you think about taking an internal assignment? We're gonna go over all of that and more with real facts and figures if travel nursing is still on your bucket list. Welcome to No Ordinary Path. I'm Kristen Farnsworth. I'm a travel nurse recruiter and my husband, John, is an ICU travel nurse and we are here in Hawaii right now on assignment. This is his 16th assignment and our sixth year doing travel nurse content and sharing that information with you guys. And every year we put out a new video addressing the market of, you know, going forward. And usually we do this in January, but you guys, we were on the move in January. I feel like it's a good time to talk about it because there's a lot of chatter out there about what the market is and isn't doing currently. So we're gonna go over those things today. This video is gonna be chock full of information, so I'm gonna give you a little hint. You can check down below in the description for the different types of things that we will be addressing in this video. Those include, what does the market look like right now today and why is it that way? Should you take a staff job and why? Should you take an internal assignment? Why? or why not, whether you should continue traveling, and if you're brand new to travel nursing, is this an okay time to try and get an assignment? Why or why not? I think you might be surprised, so stay tuned. I'm gonna say travel nurse a lot in this video, but I really mean travel healthcare because I can help both travel nurses and allied staff members, and we have all kinds of positions. So when you hear me say travel nurse, I'm not trying to disclude any any allied travelers it just rolls off my tongue because that's what my husband is the gold rush of COVID is long over and 2023 was kind of a doozy as it felt like rates were really dropping. But the need for nurses continues to rise. There will always be a need for more nurses. Just before the pandemic, there was about 50,000 travel nurses in the United States or about 1.5% of the total registered nurses. That pool doubled in size at least, but it has since thinned out some as the market has tried to reset it itself. According to Vivian, the states with the most decreased throughout last year were Rhode Island, Alaska, and Mississippi. But the list goes on, you can see those here. The good news is that there are some states that had an increase, like Connecticut, Kansas, and Louisiana. But what's more is all the states that are not listed on either of these charts, they stayed relatively the same, which means that the market might have finally leveled out. There are a few reasons why you might wanna go staff, and those would include personal situations. Like maybe you need to go staff for tax purposes. Like you don't wanna stay in a certain area too long that's gonna make you change your tax home and then have consequences for that. So a staff position might be a better alternative. If you got into travel nursing when the money was paying really good and you didn't really wanna travel in the first place, you just needed to stay kind of near your home base, this is probably a good time to go staff if you can find a good place and a good um, rate for you to go staff or go permanent. The other reason is burnout. Uh, travel nursing, uh, just nursing in general, if you just work super, super hard, you're gonna get burnt out. And I know a lot of travel nurses that have worked and put in so much extra overtime to try and get as much money as they possibly can and they just they just burn out of it. But let's talk about internal contracts because I'm a recruiter for travel nursing and I probably shouldn't encourage you to go find an internal contract, but hear me out. If you're in an area where they're, they have internal contracts, you might go and see what they're paying. It's possible that they could be paying close to or more than a travel nurse assignment. In most cases, I found that they're at or below the same rates as the travel assignments. But what you wanna look out for is the fine print. You don't wanna get stuck in something like for a big hospital system and then they say you can't come back for X amount of years as a travel nurse later. That could mess you up if you want to travel later on. Also, beware of big, huge sign-on bonuses because they might be trying to entice you to come, but then you have to work for them for X amount of years or you're going to have to pay all of that money back, which could bite you in the rear later. But internal contracts might be good if you just want to stay put for a little while and sort of ride out the storm and see if the rates come back up and you're not ready to leave travel nursing yet, but you're not and you're also not ready to be staff. 
all this doom and gloom, should you keep travel nursing? Or if you're brand new, is it an okay time to get into travel nursing? Yes, it still is a good time to get into travel nursing. I am going to always say that it is good no matter what, because even pre-COVID, when we were making way less, even less than the rates are right now, it was still good to get into travel nursing based on your needs and your desires. Do it because you want to do it, because you want to travel, because it makes sense for your family, because it gives you all the benefits that you were hoping that it would give you. Don't try to make it fit something that it's not. Travel life is amazing. And if you're looking for adventure for you or for your family, it definitely is still a worthwhile venture. For us, it made sense. And that's what this whole video is about. If it makes sense for you, go for it. And if you are gonna go for it, I can help you. Do me a favor and go like our channel, subscribe to our channel, and go check out our website. We have all kinds of information over at NoOrdinaryPath.com and you can find videos on how to get started in travel healthcare, you can find hospital reviews, and then when you're done there, you can head over to the book. We have a group called Team NOP with Atlas Med Staff and that is where John and I kind of um, have a community with other nurses that are on our team and that are looking to travel nurse and we post jobs there, we post opportunities and funny memes, market updates, and of course we're building a community so you can talk with other people who are doing exactly the same thing that you are. So what are the rates doing right now? I know that's what's on all of your mind. I can only tell you from what I have experienced from my own agency, but I will say that I feel like we, our rates are competitive and you can go check on other platforms such as Vivian. A lot of people come to me and they say, I want 3K or more, I want 3,500 or more, and I'm worth that and I should get that. And if I don't get that, I'm gonna fight back or I'm gonna find another company. And the truth of the matter is you are worth that. You totally are. But we still live in a world where there is supply and demand. Making sure that you have an understanding of what the rates actually look like out there will help you decide what is and isn't a good assignment. Unfortunately, there's a lot of bait and switch going on out there. So if you see something that seems too good to be true, it likely is too good to be true. Make sure you always compare apples to apples when looking at different like pay packages from different agencies. Right now we're seeing most of our assignments land somewhere between the 1700 mark and the $2,500 mark. There are outliers. There are some that are less than that. There are some that are more than that. Yes, we do have a few $3,000 and more assignments, but most of those are going to be for 48 hours, not for 36 hours. And that is something that people will do on Vivian. Companies and recruiters will post positions that look like they make a lot more money, but once you get into them, you realize that they're listing it for 48 hours or that that listing suddenly doesn't exist anymore. And they were really just trying to get you to build a profile with them and that job never really existed in the first place. The highest paying jobs are gonna be on your coasts. It's gonna be uh, Northeast, Upper Northeast Coast and the West Coast in California. That's where the most, the highest paid jobs are. It's also where the highest cost of living is. The lowest paying jobs that we have right now are in the Southeast. It's just the way that it is. So you're looking at Florida, Georgia, Alabama, all of those are gonna be on the lower end of the pay scale, but the cost of living in certain areas, not all, some Florida areas, not so low on that cost of living, but a lot of those are lower cost of livings. Where I find the sweet spot to be is in the middle of the country and there are so many amazing places to visit and really adventurous places that you can visit where the cost of living is low and the pay is somewhere in the middle. I have this really cool map that I wanted to show you. Now these are all positions that are currently open and they are open through Atlas Med Staff, but they're also open across the board. Atlas does staff about 98% of the jobs that are out there and you're gonna be able to find with Atlas. So this is a good representation of what is currently available out there and where the hotspots are in the country for jobs for quantity of jobs. And that matters because you're gonna to wanna to submit places where there's a lot of jobs. Let's talk specialties. My handy dandy notebook. 
We're gonna go over what the hottest ones are currently. These are job listings. They're not exactly the number of positions open because some listings will have 10 openings in one listing. Okay, so these are just the listings that we have out there. Right now, MedSearch is at 934 listings. There's tons of MedSearch needs. And if you are in another specialty that you could cross over into MedSearch and you really need a job, consider looking there because they move quick and in some cases even pay more than something like critical care because they're in such high demand. And we have underneath that, we have telemetry, which is 754 listings. Next couple of ones are ICU at 351, ER at 209 and OR at 139. All three of these are also really great specialties right now. They don't have quite as many needs as our med surge, tele, and PCU, but they are still, I am still seeing several of those get placed. And then we get to the sort of harder to place specialties. This does not mean that you cannot get a job in these specialties, but it is going to be a little bit harder. And that's LD with 57 listings open. NICU, 39 listings. Uh, then I have PACU at 30 listings. And then we get into the ones that are really starting to get hard to place right now. And that is PEDS at 25 and PICU at 21. Now I know I've left off some specialties. It doesn't mean we don't offer them. That's just what I gathered last night when I was going through this. So that gives you an idea of the jobs that are out there. And then Allied, I'm here for you too. We have a lot of Allied jobs and honestly, Allied is just growing. We are seeing a huge boom in the travel Allied industry. And those include things like um, MRI techs, CT techs, surgical techs. Contact me if you're a surgical tech. Um, they, we've got cath lab techs, we've got IR techs. Um, all kinds of techs. Then we have occupational therapists and physical therapists, uh, nuclear techs, x-ray techs. You guys, there's 1,555 openings right now for Allied. If you are just jumping in on the travel healthcare bandwagon in your Allied, let's get you placed because there's stuff out there for you for sure. Two more tips. Number one, if you are working at an assignment that you really love right now, keep it extend it as long as you can without messing with your tax home. And if you don't love, love, love the agency you're in, know that you can flip extensions if you need to. The second thing is if you don't already have licenses in states that are single state licensed, you might consider that. Places like Massachusetts, New York, California, Illinois is a huge one, Michigan, Minnesota. If you don't have licenses in Minnesota one, might, might be compact. Michigan, if you don't have licenses in those areas but you'd like to travel there, get on that now. We can reimburse you once you get an assignment there, so don't worry about that aspect. It will make you way more marketable because a lot of times what happens is we've got these hot jobs in Illinois right now, but you have to have an Illinois license in order to submit. I hope you've enjoyed all of these tips today and this blanket overview of the market. If you have any questions about any of it, please let me know. I would be happy to help you. If you or someone you know is looking for a travel healthcare position, you know where to find me. I hope you've enjoyed all of these tips today and this blanket overview of the market. If you have any questions about any of it, please let me know. I would be happy to help you. If you or someone you know is looking for a travel healthcare position, you know where to find me. Go to noordinarypath.com slash travel nurse jobs and let me know you're looking and I would be happy to reach out to you and give you a call and see if we can get you placed somewhere. And if you like this content, let me know. If there's something that you would like to know about the travel nurse industry, I would love to bring that to you. I have really enjoyed working on this side of things. We do offer referral bonuses of $750. If you, if you know somebody and you wanna refer them to me and I get them placed, I am happy to send that money to you. Thank you guys so much for watching. This weekend we'll be back to our Hawaiian adventures. It is incredible here and I can't wait to bring you all of that from the Puna district on the southeast side of the island. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you out there.